drinking herba mate and I mixed an energy tea with this so that I could get a lot of work done. I am up at 2.30 in the morning. This is usually when I write. Um, so I don't know if you guys have ever used this, but this is Tiavana. And um, they have a store in the mall and it's a really good tea company and it's where Starbucks it's the same as Starbucks so if you go there and you buy it by the ounce it's a really fun place to go to so I live off of what is that some of the tea got in there but I live off of these shortbread cookies um, and they're the, let me see if I can find what they are. They're these, but I just got them in a different style. I think they're called, um, cake toppers or something. I can't remember to be quite honest, but anyway, I'll have a little bit of those and this will get me going while I'm working. Okay. Now you guys, I'm going to show you something interesting. Okay. So I usually take creamer and I will put purified water in these. I think these are some kind of old... They're from a water company, and I can't remember what the name of the water is, but it's glass. And um, and I also live on these zip fizzes. You can get these at Sam's, and they're all natural, so you don't have like a you know like a, a buzz or like get really really shaky or anything like that. And I live on Lacroix, so sometimes I'll put um, one of the zip fizzes and mix it with Lacroix. And then sometimes I'll just do purified water and then use a creamer, a vanilla creamer with that because it makes it taste like a creamsicle. And these are a wonderful way to get a little bit of natural energy if you're not going to use um, coffee, if you don't want to use coffee because I don't like my teeth <laughs> to get brown. And um, anyway, so I thought I would give you that little tip and I use this one, the French vanilla, and I use the full vanilla. I don't use the fat free because I don't like that. So anyway, just I thought maybe you might want to try those you can get them at Sam's like I said and they're like 20 bucks for two dozen I think hey my darling friends I want to tell you something this is a trick okay so you guys know that I have chickens right so I'm doing a bunch of boiled eggs if you have chickens which you probably already know this but if you do boiled eggs make sure you use the oldest eggs first instead of the new ones because if you've ever noticed if you try to peel a new egg that's just laid they do not peel well so take always the ones from down below before you start doing the ones on the top the front more fresh because these were from yesterday so yes yeah, so that's what I'm doing here Jeffrey loves those and so do I during the week boiling really really well I actually had to put more in here and this is a bigger one so it's going to take a little bit longer but I usually do it between 12 and 15 minutes. And the reason I do it 12 to 15 minutes is because I want them to be super cooked. I don't want them to be half yolk cooked because I'll gross out. Um, but anyway, that's like the perfect time. So, especially with that many eggs in a pot. Okay. Hi, Mermaid Junkies and Shoal family. How are you, my dear friends? I love you all. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. And if you're new to my channel, which I have a lot more new subscribers, which is lovely and wonderful, and thank you so much for subscribing. Liking my channel is basically, I'm a mermaid of over 30 plus years. My professional mermaid career began when I was 17 years old, and I got my first job as a mermaid performer at a place called Wikiwatchie Springs in Wikiwatchie Springs, Florida. Basically what my channel is about is I use metaphors. I basically call it my mermaid metaphor and methodology map, which is to inspire women and girls to create a life they love. I'm on, I've been on a spiritual journey for over six and a half years. And so I wanted to share my life experiences with you. So if you're new here, thank you so much for swimming along. And I hope to inform you, inspire you, help you to create a life that you love through all of my practices, life experiences along my transformational tale. So today what I wanted to, it's basically my channel, it has so much to do with law of attraction. 
And so there is so many videos on YouTube and such with regards to manifesting your dream home. And I think I've done a couple of blog posts about this and I've also done a few post, I mean, a few vlog videos about manifesting your dream home. And I'll link that below on the description box. And, but I wanted to go into more of a detailed, precise, precise. mermaid fin focused way of manifesting your dream home because there are a lot of videos out there. There are a lot of tutorials, like as far as like spirituality and learning and understanding the law of attraction. And especially I preface my teachings on Abraham Hicks teachings through the law of attraction. And so I wanted to kind of go into like a little bit more, give you pearls of wisdom to inspire you along your transformational tale with wanting to manifest your dream home. So, and I'm going to give a couple of examples because I'm in the process of manifesting my next dream home. So I want you to go along on this voyage with me because I think it'll be fun and exciting. And so you'll see the different things like I wanted to start putting out more content with regards to, you know, along my transformational tale and the voyages and the ebbs and flows because just because you practice the law of attraction doesn't mean you're never you're never going to um, encounter those, you know, shaky or uh, turbulent waters. And so I want to inspire you that when those particular turbulent waters appear and it's a whirlpool of emotions or different things that you're struggling with, I want to inspire you to know of ways to navigate through that to get to your open waters, okay? And um, everyone desires to find their own true north. And so you can take my metaphors and then intertwine them with your own life. And I think that it's fun and inspiring to teach through metaphors and methodology. The reason that I like to teach in stories and metaphors and parables and things of that nature is because I did, you know, I used to be very, very religious and I grew up in a very, very religious home. And so I felt that as a child, when I was being taught things, especially like in the Bible or in a religious manner, when I was being taught as a young girl, I loved stories and so I always and so I write children's stories and so I think that when you are hearing a story or a parable or a metaphor or methodology that it really inspires you to change when my kids were younger and I homeschooled them I began recognizing that children learn in metaphors and they learn with stories and methodology. And so that is how the Mermaid Junkie Academy came about, is that I began creating curriculums for my children when I was homeschooling them so that they would be able to learn more accurately, that they would learn in a way that was um, an ever learning experience. Because how many times did we learn mathematics or we learned something in school and we didn't necessarily retain the information because it wasn't entertaining to us and it didn't, you know, tickle our fancy, so to speak. And so I want to get women and girls most particularly excited. I want you to be tickled conch shell pink with excitement to inspire change, have a revolutionary change, transformational change in your life because that is my object. That is my objective is to create such a love of life for you and as well as myself so that we can implement this change in our own lives so that girls can and that we can therefore as women and mothers help to inspire and re-navigate our own children back into their inner being and them to you know resurface that internal treasure chest that they have which is their their inner being okay and so okay so now i got all that out of the way if you want to subscribe to my channel click the link below and or if you want to tap on the bell for notifications that's when i'm going to upload more videos and you will get notified um okay so when I was talking about how to manifest your dream home, I'm going to give detailed, explicit way of how the universe works, okay? So I'm sure that you've seen so many videos about how to manifest your dream home, how I manifested $100,000, how I manifested this, how I manifested that. I had always wanted to live in older homes. I had always loved older homes. And so 
I really, really wanted to live in an older home. Now, mind you, let me preface that I was never a practicer of the law of attraction. At that time, I was very involved in my religion. And so they very much um, want to deter you away from believing in law of attraction or expansion in any way if it's not umbrellaed under this particular, like, uniformed kind of boxed in belief system. When the first real manifestation that I realized that I was like, oh my gosh, I really did this, right? Is um, once again, I wasn't practicing the law of attraction, but I believed very strongly and had a great, great sense of faith in my higher being, um, you know, source, the universe, God, however you want to preface that in your life. So at the time, I think it was like 2004, and, and my husband at the time and our four children had moved from Utah to Florida. And so we were moving back to our home state, and we obviously were looking for a home, and we, but we didn't want to buy. And the reason that we didn't want to buy was because our credit, we were working towards getting our credit back in line because we had left a house. And I'm going to be very transparent with you guys. I mean, we were horrible. Like, we had to file bankruptcy, and we lost our home in Alabama to foreclosure. And so we had spent 10 years trying to rebuild our credit and try to get all of that stuff financially worked out. Well, it just so happens that my husband actually at the time got a really, really good job. He was making really, really superb amounts of money. And so I never really had to work at all. And so when we moved from Utah back to Florida, we needed a place to live and we wanted something really really nice something that my kids could go to school in that particular area you know like you know kindergarten and things and we wanted it to be in a really good neighborhood so that we were zoned for particular schools you know a plus schools and so at the time we were so um, brokenhearted about our financial difficulties that we didn't want to buy we were very very apprehensive about ever buying again and I promised myself, even back then, that I still remember this, and I know that the universe has this in my escrow account, is that I never wanted to purchase a home again unless I could pay cash for my house. So if my house is going to be $2 million, I want to literally write a check for $2 million cash and pay for my home. I never wanted to have a mortgage on my house. Even the cottage. I have a... Um, a quit deed to this house. And I did that for like in case of death or something, you know, being very business minded as a woman. But I also didn't want to be on the mortgage because I am trying to repair my credit and build my credit. Because when you're a woman entrepreneur and you're starting a business and you're doing all of these different things and I don't have credit, does that make sense? Like I have bare minimum of credit, but that's because of my old married name and it was under, like, prefaced under my ex-husband. And so when I'm trying to build my own name and my own credit lines, I don't want to have any attachments to that right now. Now, that might change in the future, but for right now, the, you know, the house is solely in Jeffrey's name. But I have a quick deed to the house so that that takes care of all the financial issues. Um, so, or You know what I'm saying? Like, I would still have um, ownership to the home, like selling it and that kind of thing. So, or death or whatever. So mind you ladies that if you are new to this and you were wanting to do that, try to keep things in your own name, try to keep accounts in your own name, have your own particular thing. Because I believe women that it's very important that we empower ourselves first before we extend ourselves outward. And so like I said, so we were looking around trying to find a house and I remember we came to Florida, and this was in Orlando. See, I wasn't living in the same town that like I'm living now, but we moved to Orlando, Florida. And so I didn't know the area at all, and I didn't want to do things blindsided because I had done that before where we would just, we would rent homes over the internet because we were always traveling with my, my ex-husband's career. He's in entertainment, so it, we were always, every couple of years, moving to different cities, different states, and all over the place, okay? And so we have done that before where we would 
rent homes just on the clear sight of it, not knowing what it looked like around the area, the vicinity or anything. And I said, I didn't want to do that again. So we had come to Florida and I said, I don't want to rent a house before I've looked in it. I want to feel it. I want to know that the energy's there. And I just really want to be prepared in where I'm going to be living for however God knows how long, you know? But anyway, so we went around. We found a friend through our church or whatever that knew somebody that was in Florida. And they said, oh, we'll take you around to these different homes or whatnot. So... I remember seeing this neighborhood called Heathrow, and it was a very prestigious. And if you live in Orlando or you live anywhere near Heathrow, you know that that's where a lot of the ball players, that like um, so, a lot of celebrities live in that neighborhood, which is called Heathrow. And I remember driving by it, and I, you know, you couldn't get in or anything, but I wanted to get in there and I wanted to see what the houses looked like because I thought, oh my goodness, this looks just like all the trees swayed and it was so well landscaped and groomed, you know. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I really, I think I want to live there. Well, I hadn't even been inside there, but I knew I had seen a couple of the houses online and I'm like, oh, like ivy growing on the house and, you know, these big, extraordinary, like it was gated community. And I was like, oh my gosh, I really want to live there. And so we had lived in gated communities before. And so my ex-husband wanted to live in a gated community as well. And so that was fine because, um, you know, I thought that that was nice. Well, so what happened was I ended up um, I remember saying, and this was like my prayer to myself and to God, source, the universe. And so when we first moved there, I was like, I want to live in Heathrow. And that's where I want to live. Like no ifs, ands, or buts. And I want my house to be a one level. Like I didn't want a double, you know, a two story, three story or anything like that. I wanted it to be one level and I wanted it to be a cute little darling house, but manageable for me because I, I never had cleaning ladies or anything like that. And I didn't want to, you know, hire any because I, I love cleaning and I like that kind of thing that I'm very domesticated in that way. And so I also said that because I live in Florida and I have four young children, I want to be able to have a swimming pool with the house. That was a must. So those were my basic three criterias. Obviously, it needed to be within our price range. I mean, and those houses were millions of dollars, like upwards to like, you know, eight, nine million, all the way down from, you know, like 1.2 million or something like that. And so do you see what I'm saying? That was a huge range and we were still working on our credit and our credit sucked and he still didn't make that kind of money. You know, he made extraordinary money, but not the kind that, I mean, for a house with the, you know, a note, a mortgage that big, that's a lot of money every month. I don't know if you've ever added it up, but a quarter of a million house, depending on your interest rate, is a good anywhere close to three grand a month. So, um, you know, so this was at the time, um, that was what houses were going for at the time. Okay. So but anyway, I didn't end up I didn't end up getting my house in Heathrow. Truth of the matter is, is I didn't get what I wanted. I didn't get to live in Heathrow. And I'm sure that it had a lot to do with my particular mindset. Because if you have money barriers, uh, scarcity beliefs about money, you are going to sabotage any kind of dream, desire, or manifestation that you have in your life. And so I wasn't aware of it at the time, but I knew that I had a lot of faith and I knew that I wanted this particular thing. And so I just kind of threw it out of my mind and we rented this beautiful two-story house. It was huge. I mean, it was so huge. It was like ridiculously huge. And I never wanted a huge house. Like I just wanted something that I was able to manage on my own. If you're anything like me and you're a mother and you have little children. So anyway, I was already overwhelmed doing everything. You know what I'm saying? Like being a house, you know, a homemaker, doing all the things that I do because I mean, I used to, I mean, I still sewed my kids on their clothes and I still did, you know, so many things with my church activities and all that. And so I didn't really want a big house. I just wanted a media, you know, a moderate home 
that I could maintain, but I wanted it to be in a very exquisite neighborhood. And so anyway, we ended up renting this home and we lived there for five years. And so our lease was coming up and I was getting antsy because I was thinking, okay, I don't know what's going to happen with my husband's job because this was the time period of where things start to either like he's going to start seeking another job. He was getting antsy or are we going to, is he going to sign another contract that's for three to five years or whatever? And so I didn't know. And I was also tired of paying almost $3,000 in rent. I just felt like it was a lot of money to be going out the window and so I was this was five years down the road and I was like you know what I really I'm ready to buy a house now I think it's time and so I you know had never forgotten and I completely prayed all five of those years that I still wanted to live in Heathrow. I drove past Heathrow every single day, several times a day, because in order to get to my house where I was living in the other gated community, I had to drive right by Heathrow, which was the other gated community across the street. And so I was like always pining for wanting to live in that neighborhood. And I was just like, oh, if I lived in that neighborhood, oh, if I, you know, I just, I just desired it. Not because I wanted the, the status symbol or anything like that. I didn't care about that. It's just that the, the, it evoked such a beauty inside of me that I loved. It kind of reminded me of England. And when I saw those little Tudor homes, you know, when I had looked at them online and stuff and they had the like creeping fig growing up and they had the cobblestone fronts and the old, you know, um, garage doors that looked, you know, they appeared to be real old European and they had the thatched roofs on some of them, on, on some of the homes, you know, not all of them, but I just real was enthralled with it because that's where I've always desired to live is in, in Carmel, California. That has been on my dream board since probably for the, for, for the last 15 years. And so, um, I was just, you know, pining to live in that neighborhood. Well, so like I said, we started looking around. Okay, and this was a process of about eight months. And so we were looking at houses and I was, this is what's going to show you if you push things in life like a noodle, like if you try to push things into place, you will get there. Things will stick on the wall, but in the process, you're going to get kind of dirty. You know what I mean? You're going to get muddy. And so what happened was I was really, really wanting to live in Heathrow, um, but I kept having the outside verbal in my ear of, we can't afford that. We can't afford that neighborhood. We can't afford that neighborhood. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like people, when you tell people what your dream and desire is, like that's way out there, Raquel. Why are you even going there? You don't, you're not going to be able to manifest that. And so that's the thing that you need to remember. If you're not spiritually and uh, strong enough in your mindset to tell people of what your dreams and desires are, you might want to keep them to yourself because if you, if it causes you to pivot in your thought process or your energetic vibration, then you might not want to tell people of the things that are manifesting or you're desiring to manifest until they've actually manifested because so many people get their um, contradicting uh, energy from that, if you start taking on other people's negativity, it's going to mess your focus up. And then you're going to have all of these, you know, contradictions and it's going to be uh, confusing. And then the universe will not manifest that for you because it, you're, you're going from one thing to the next, one thing to the next. And I didn't realize this until two years ago, you know, about manifesting Flanders in Carmel, California. So anyway, so what happened was, we ended up looking and looking and looking and my ex-husband at the time was just like no we can't afford that we can't afford to even look there and so i was just almost getting to the point to where i just said you know what i finally just gave up and, and we found another house in this place called the springs which was out of our zone like we were going to be in a different ward for church um, so like the family, you know, basically the church family that we had, it was like five years and we were going to have to get, you know, go to a new ward and you Mormons would understand that like, be, you know, me being an ex-Mormon, but, um, and so my kids were going to have to go to all new schools. They weren't zoned for the same schools. The neighborhood didn't appease me as much, but I felt like, okay, well, this is a house we can afford. So I kind of like it. My ex-husband didn't like it and it didn't have a lot of things that I wanted. Like I wanted a big 
um, big bathtub. I wanted to be able to, um, I wanted one of those garden tubs. And in the entire house, it didn't even have a garden tub. I mean, it was very gorgeous. It had beautiful copper sinks and they had done a lot of custom to it. And it had a beautiful swimming pool. I mean, the swimming pool was gorgeous and the yard and where it was located was just to die for. And they had, a in the neighborhood, they had a beautiful live spring, which was my big thing. I was like, this is like a piece of heaven on earth. So I kind of resided into the fact that I was like, okay, well, I guess this is going to be our house and I'm not going to live in Heathrow. So we take on this process of a total of eight months, okay? Things kept happening over and over, different things. We couldn't close on the house when we wanted to. Then they needed extra money because the, something was wrong with the pool. And then we found out that the roof was messed up. Anyway, so at the end, I had already removed my kids. I had started packing up and getting ready to move into this house because we were, we were right near closing. And then they come back like three days before closing or something like that. I can't remember exactly the detail. But they said, you're going to have to have a whole new roof and they're not going to include that in the price. And so that was going to that was going to eliminate the entire process unless we completely started scrounging for extra money. Like just it was becoming a it, not becoming it had been a nightmare to get this house. And then my husband just called like he just called the shots that day and he said, we're I'm not buying this house. We are not buying it. End of subject. We're done. And so I was devastated and um, I had already put my kids in the different schools. They had already enrolled and it was, you know, it was like during Christmas vacation. So I did it when, you know, the semester, like before school had started again in January after the new year began. And I was just, I mean, and plus, you know, I was having a really hard time in my marriage at that time as well. And this was in 2008, and um, so anyway, so this is happening and then we get to 2009, okay? So then I said, okay, well, it's back to the chopping block, right? It's back to whatever. And so one day I just decided without telling anyone, I had been praying all this time, right? I want to live in Heathrow. I want the price to be perfect. I want us to be able to, and this was another thing that I preface you guys. And this goes to show you how much the universe listens to you and how much your detailed desires are out into the universe. The one thing, I mean, I would pray this constantly and I didn't need to. I didn't know what I was doing as far as like manifesting and stuff because I wasn't listening. You know, I wasn't doing it as it, with, in re regards to the law of attraction. I was doing it like as a faith-based person. But the, and so obviously, you know, a lot of times when people do that, they are very much um, inclined to pray the same prayer over and over and over and over and over and over. When we need to realize like law of attraction, you don't need to do that. You just need to put that desire out into the universe one time and the universe will fulfill it. But because we lack that belief and trust and faith, we continually always say, oh, just in case you didn't hear me, this is what I want. Just in case you didn't hear me, this is what I want, right? So I would pray all the time that not only when I found the house in Heathrow, would it be a one level, it would be perfect. I would be able to do minor little things to it because I wanted to fix it up. I wanted to paint because we had been renting all this time. And so I wanted to be able to have my very own walls that I could paint whatever color I wanted instead of an apartment cream, you know? And I wanted to be able to do little like adjustments, you know, put in a new cute little sink faucet or, you know, paint my cabinets in my kitchen or, you know, just little minor things. I didn't want to have to do like deconstruction, um, but I wanted to do a little bit of remodeling and things like that to make it old and Victorian looking. So that is exactly what I did. But anyway, so I'm getting ahead of myself. So one of the other desires that I had always been speaking about was that I said, I want to be able to, when it is time for us to sell our home, I want us to sell it so quickly that it will almost be like unbelievable to some people viewing it from the external perspective. I said, I want it to sell so fast that people will be like, what just happened? Like that's impossible. And so if you guys know my story that I've already told you about is that that actually every single thing that I manifested happened. 
And so anyway, okay, so back to the story of I didn't tell anybody because I didn't want anybody to give me any lip or like, oh no, you can't, oh, we, we can't live there or whatever. And so I went and I called a, a realtor and I said, look, I want to go in Heathrow and I want to look and see if there's any houses. Now, if you guys are aware of the time period of this, this was in 2009, this is when the market crashed. Nobody could sell houses at this point. Okay, like it was on the decline and it was bad. Like people were starting to sell their homes where it was like a million dollar home and they're selling it for a half a million to under 375 or something like that. So this was a really good time for us to actually purchase a house. So that was a benefit to us, right? So I went to Heathrow. We went in there and the realtor said, well, in your price range, um, what you're qualified for is we have these two houses. And so I was like, okay. And um, so we went and I looked at the one house and it was $60,000 over what we were qualified for. And um, I didn't, I wasn't really crazy about it. They had, it was, it was the exact same house that as the one next door to it, literally right next door to it. And they were both identical in the way that they were laid out and everything, except for that the kitchen that I was looking at, it was $60,000 more because they had just put in new cherry cabinets in the kitchen. They had redone the kitchen and put cherry cabinets in there. And it was, you know, an updated kitchen. And I was just like, and I didn't even, I don't like cherry wood to begin with. It has too much of a red pigment in it and it's totally off-putting to me. So I was looking at it and I was like, oh, okay, this is great, you know, whatever. And I also didn't like it because I didn't like that it had white tile in the entire house. Like in the family room and like, I just didn't like it. I mean, I don't mind tile, but white, it was just like, ugh. I hate this and I would, you know, I'd have to take that up and I wouldn't like it. I don't like it. I mean, I could have done things, but anyway, the whole point was I did, I wasn't crazy about the house. And she said, well, you know, um, also the other thing is, is somebody else is putting a bid in. So you might want to, if you're interested in this house, you might want to go ahead and put an offer in because they've already gotten one offer on this house. And I was just like, uh, okay. I said, well, why don't you just go ahead and show us the other house? And she said, okay, well, it's really, really dated. You know, this house is very dated, even though, you know, it takes some work. I mean, this house, okay, on the outside was like this putrid yellow, which I can't believe because, you know, they're zoned like in certain gated communities. You have to get an okay to paint your house certain colors. Maybe it was just me and it was just too yellowy. And um, it wasn't like banana yellow or canary yellow or anything like that, but it was just like yellowy and I just, ugh, it was awful. And so then we walk in and it has all turquoise carpet in it, turquoise. And I knew that the house was not old enough to have wood floors like magically appear underneath if I ripped the carpet out, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, so, okay, so it's going to have to have new carpet through the whole thing. Then we go into the kitchen and I'm just like, this is dreadful. The kitchen had that pickled oak. Do you remember that in the 90s or like early 2000s? It was like a purple, I mean, it was like a pinkish pickled oak. Like I used to have furniture that was that color and it was awful. And then they had like the worst paint colors, nothing neutral. It was like turquoise, hot pink, like bright hot pink, like you would see in Miami, like on the beaches of like restaurants and stuff. And then I went to another room and it was like this deep purple. It was just treacherous. It was awful, you guys. It was so awful, the colors. But but like I said, I have an interior design degree, so I knew that there's so many things that I could do that wouldn't cost a lot of money that I could really improve the house immensely with just paint and carpet, right? And even painting the outside of the house. I mean, I'm capable. I can get on a ladder and I know how to do that too. So, I mean, my dad, you know, I grew up, my dad is a contractor, so I knew that anything, I was capable of doing anything, like, with regards to that, right? So the bones were good, but I had to deal with all of that kind of stuff. So anyway, long story short, we end up buying that house. It was everything that I wanted. 
And so I went to bit, you know, went to town having the, getting everything in order. You know, I redid the entire uh, kitchen cabinets, like distressed them in an old look and, you know, repainted all the entire house, repainted the entire house inside and out. And I also, we ended up doing a lot of remodeling and, you know, adding touches of Victorian to the house like I gilded the walls and I did all kinds of really cool stuff and then we got wood floors like the dark dark you know walnut floor wood floors with the extra big planks and so I just went to town like decorating it I had all my old antiques in there and like all my thrift store finds and stuff like that and it was darling well so then we lived there probably for two and a half maybe two years and then my ex-husband ended up getting fired from his job. So we had to sell the house. I was like, we've got to sell it. We have to sell it. I don't know what we're going to do. And so um, I knew that we only had a certain amount of money and savings to live on for however long it was going to take him to get another job. So I said, okay, let's put the house up for sale. So I had a big, massive estate sale. And I just said, we're going to sell every single thing we have. And I'll make killer money doing this. I ended up making over $6,000 um, off of all my stuff in my house. And so that was a real big, like that really helped us a lot. And so we used a lot of that money for like down payment, not down payment, but yeah, like deposits and stuff, like us having to move into an apartment and everything. And so we got, you know, a couple of new pieces from Ikea and things like that. So when we lived in the apartment. That was the best thing to do for at that time. But let me just tell you, do you know how long it took me to sell our house? We had three showings and it sold in two days. We put it on the market. Two days later, we sold. And that goes to show you that I was manifesting long before I ever realized that I was manifesting. So it's perfectly wonderful. Even when things seem like they're not working out, don't ever, um, don't ever lose sight of your true desires and wants, okay? Just because it's no for now doesn't mean it's no forever. And I want you to really remember that because there's going to be times in your life that you're going to be disappointed or you're going to think, why am I not getting what I want? The universe doesn't love me. God doesn't love me as much. That's why I'm not getting what I want. Because see, at the time, I needed that to happen the way that it happened but it was also a testament that I actually did get out what I wanted. But see, I was starting to second guess myself. And then I decided, I think through my energy, that I was so contradicting in my desires that I was like, no, I don't deserve that. I guess I can live here. And do you see what I'm saying? Like the universe is going to give you exactly what you're not sure of. And so that is why my word for this year for 2018 was focused. Be thin focused, okay? And so when you have a desire, you have a want, don't contradict it with disbelief. Like if you want a particular thing like, oh no, I really want a Mercedes G550 wagon, okay? Be specific about it. Say, I want it to be white. I want it to have like white wall tire. I'm just throwing out stuff. I want it to have a, you know, Bose system inside of it. I want it to have cream leather interior. I want it to have this. I want it to have that. I, you have to be specific with the universe and then don't sway from that. Don't go, well, I guess I can take this white Durango and it'll do. Like, don't do that because once you do, you're contradicting the universe. So basically what you're saying is, I don't believe the universe can manifest this for me. And another thing is, I don't believe I deserve it. And so I want you to remember that you do deserve it Every single thing down to the minute details you actually deserve and you will get it. It's just you lining up your energy with that desire and don't contradict it and don't believe that just because you don't get it exactly when you want it to, the universe has everything in your escrowed account and knows exactly the way to navigate you towards your desires. So you have to remember that you need to trust yourself and what you want is suffice enough because you are worthy of it. You don't have to earn worthiness. Worthiness is given to you from source, from God, free of charge, okay? You don't have to make up for it or do a certain amount of good deeds before you can have what you want. You get everything that you want, and it all depends only on your vibrational, energetic um, 
focus without contradicting that with disbelief, okay? So I hope this was inspiring to you. I'm gonna do another video, but I mean, I'm, my camera is going dead. So um, I'm gonna do another one about my dream home up here, okay? My Carmel, California. Um, Flanders Mansion, the one that I always talk about, and I've written several blog posts about it, and I think I've also talked about it on my channel as well. But anyway, I hope that this inspired you. I hope that you um, appreciated everything that I told you. Um, if you would love to give a mermaid junkie her fins, swim on over and become a Shoal family member by subscribing to my channel, and um, I hope to see you soon, and as always, most affably yours to my next swim. Ciao!